Hello guys! In this video we will keep developing our tutorial following the comments from previous videos. This video will basically cover this comment and so we will see how we can add dialogues to our game. But we will not create it from scratch. We will see how we can use the asset lib to search a plugin to help us. The asset lib has many plugins made and maintained by the community that you can use in your project saving a lot of development time. Here we can see the name of the plugin, who is the main developer and the license to use. You can check more details clicking on the developer's name so it will open the GitHub page of the project. But in this video we will take a look in a specific plugin called Dialogic developed by Emilio Coppola. So first we will see how we can install it through the asset lib and after we will see how we can download and install it from the GitHub page. We will see both ways because sometimes the last version is not available at the asset lib. And this is the case with Dialogic at the moment. So I will use in this video the last GitHub version, that's the version 1.2.3 and I recommend you to use this or a greater version. So let's search for Dialogic. The plugin that we will use is the first one by Emilio Coppola. Here we can check the version and description of the plugin. Now we can download it. Here at the installation window, it will work if we just press install, but we really just need the add-on folder, so we can unmark everything else. Now we can install it. Now we need to activate the plugin at project, project settings, plugins and here we click at enable and we can close the window. Now before we start to use the plugin, it's recommended to close the project and open it again. So that's the way to install a plugin from the asset lib. But as I said before, we will use the GitHub version at this video. So let's check how we can install it. So first we can access the GitHub page clicking at the developer's name or just searching for it on Google. In this page we can see some information about the plugin and how to use it. But to download it we can click at code, download zip. Then we unzip the file and we will have something like this. And we are just interested at the add-ons folder for now, so we can copy it and paste it at the root of our project. To open the folder quickly, you can at Godot click at the rest folder with the right button and then at open in file manager. Just paste the add-ons folder there, after that we enable it at the project settings like we did before and restart Godot. As this plugin has a lot of functionalities, I will just cover the basics and you can keep playing with it to adapt it to your needs. But before we start to use the plugin, let's create an NPC to speak to the player. So let's create a new scene. Let's put an area and a collision shape at him. We can use the green guy to become our NPC. Let's put a sprite with a text balloon icon to inform that this is a NPC. We can make it appear and disappear when the player is close or not, similar to what we did to our enemy. So we add the balloon sprite. Then we configure the body entered and body exited to make the balloon appear and disappear.
and let's hide the balloon when the scene starts. Now we can add the NPC to the scene. Let's run it. OK, and there is it. Now we can start to use our plugin. So we can press this dialogic tab here. We can start creating the characters. The characters are used to inform who is talking. So we just need our player and the NPC as characters. There are more options here, like change the color for the character's name or use a portrait for the character. Let's create the NPC character now. Now let's create a new theme. The theme is used to style everything about your speech box, like colors, font, size, speed of speaking. You can even put sounds while a character is speaking. And here you can see a preview of the box. I will keep it like it is, but feel free to explore it. Here at settings you have another options. I will not cover definitions in this video because I'm not totally sure about them. I guess they work like variables, but we can use variables at our script, so we will keep using the normal ones for now. But feel free to try it if you want. And now we go to the most important part, the timeline. The timeline is where the conversations are built. As we can see, we have a lot of options to choose. But let's keep it simple. So first, let's add a text. Here we select who is speaking. Then we write what he's speaking. And we can add a new text to respond it. Let's change this timeline's name to start, so we can call it easier later. Now let's add a question. Then we do the same again, choose who is speaking and what he is speaking. And then the choices. And here, to know that the yes option was chosen, let's add a signal. So the signal will be sent if the yes option is chosen. Now let's start to make our code to manage the dialogue. So when the player enters the NPC area, we can make the NPC start to speak. So first we check if there is no dialogue node to avoid create multiple dialogues. If there is not, we can start a dialogue. Here we put the timeline and we need to add the dialogue to our scene. Now let's manage the signal. We need to connect the script to the signal so that we can listen to it. Here we can see that the signal that we want is the dialogic signal. So we connect to the dialogic signal. As we want to connect it to this script, we will self as the second parameter. And the third parameter is the function called when the signal is fired. Now we can create this function. And this function receives a parameter and we can print it to check if it is working. So let's check. Ok, so our dialogue system is working. And here we can see the word at the console as expected. But now let's make this quest work. So first let's check if the message is yes. And I guess we need to create a new variable to check if the quest is already accepted or not. Because we don't want the quest to be accepted more than once. So let's just create this variable. And if the quest is accepted, we set the variable to true, so it can just be accepted once. 
and probably we will need a variable to check if the quest is already finished. So let's create it. And now we can change the dialog interaction so that we show the current text if the quest is not accepted and not finished. We need to add an enemy skill counter, and to do that we will use global variables or singletons. I like to call it globals, I think it makes more sense to me, so let's create a new script and I will call it globals, but feel free to give the name you want. And to make that possible, we need to access project, project settings, auto load, and here we add this new script. Verify if the box is enabled and we can close the window. In this script, we can put variables or functions that will be accessible by any other script. Now we can open this global script and add this enemy skilled variable. Let's set it to 0 for now. Now we can increment this variable in 1 at the enemy script when the enemy dies. To access these global variables, we just need to put the global script's name before the variable name, separate by the dot. And now our NPC will check if the enemy's counter is equal or bigger than 5, and if so, it will call another timeline called finished. So let's go back to Dialogic and create this timeline. Let's make the NPC say congratulations. It's probably not the best reward, but it's fine for now. Now let's add extra enemies so that the player can really kill 5 enemies. And now we can run it to check the result. So we can accept the mission, and after that the NPC don't speak to the player again. Now let's kill the enemies. And now the NPC says congratulations. Nice! So we have seen how we can use Dialogic to create a dialogue for our game. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, if so please leave a comment, like, subscribe and thanks for watching, bye!